Hey everyone, it's Jason, and welcome back to another unboxing for Keep the Heroes Out. This is for the Boss Battles expansion. This is video part two. Uh, part one, we went over the basic extra rules for the boss battle, how the bosses work, the mechanics, all the different components in there. Then we went over all the different boss cards and the scenarios in there. I'll heads up, there were spoiler announcements. In case you didn't want to be spoiled of which bosses were or what they did until you actually played against them. Uh, so I did a little part where I explained the new uh, heroes, which were the rookies. And then we went over each of the different scenarios and bosses. Uh, in this one, we're going to go over the rest of the unlockable cards. We did go over one deck. We went over deck K. We're going to go over the rest of them, which were A through O minus K. Which were unlocked while playing through the scenarios. Um... So we had listed in there, even right off the bat, we had, uh, let's see if I can find it here, we had, do, 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 do. as you're playing through, if you unlock, you can unlock packet G, which gets you a gadget, extra gadget cards, uh, but then as you play through the scenarios, if you beat certain things, such as in the first mission, um, if you defeat the troll and you win the Mac, you unlock the stone troll. Now, they don't unlock in order of A, B, C, D through the order they jump around. So, like, even for the second mission, which is the... You unlock pack M um, instead. Uh, so, when you're playing them in order, you're not going to lock them A through B. A, B, C, D, but we're going to go through them in that order. And then we're going to get a look at what all the different new monsters do. So, if you're wondering what the monsters do, this is the video for you. But I'm still going to give out the spoiler warning because we're going to go through each of the unlocked packs as they would come um all right so without too much further ado let's jump into the first one which is pack a um and then each one when you do is you flip if you flip over the cards so each pack will have a thing on both sides so you can't see and you can unwrap them all um it'll show you what cards are in there so this one's going to show we are getting the main uh the main one and then we are also getting uh, 10 extra cards. Alright, so here we are going to unlock our, again, so our main card, which is our main clan card. So I have our picture on the back there. It is for our, uh, Stone Troll. So we will unlock his deck of cards. Um, so there's his miniature or his meeple there. Uh, so like all the other ones, we're going to show, like the other monsters from the base game, it's going to show how they are summoning, how many we have. Him su he summons to the crossbow, and he has one for health, and he has his 10 cards. His action is activate throw. Um, so throw is pretty interesting. Throw one resource, item, trap, or smaller monster to the furthest room straight line from your meeple. Uh, pro tip, avoid acquiring equipment. You can have many melee attacks uh you have many melee attack cards so try crafting and write potion that helps you draw them more often uh so this is actually a really neat ability so if he has multiple actives um activate abilities he can throw multiple things to get his smaller resources um across the room quicker so someone can drop traps he can get them across um so they're showing in the picture uh you still activation is in this card, use your special ability twice and throw the book and the slime to the library. So the slime player can crack the scroll in the next turn. So it saves that, that slime from having to spend two move actions to move all the way over there. Um, but now, also being said, that goes, he throws it in a straight line to the furthest room in a straight line. So you might end up overshoot. You can't target. There's four rooms in a row. You can't throw him two rooms and then leave the third room alone or the fourth room alone. He's going to go to wherever the farthest room is. Um, so actually, if we look at like a map here, this map here, so as an example, he could throw from here to here or here to here, here to here, or back and forth to the next room, which isn't really a big deal. But then if you look at the main one, you have one, two, three, four, five rooms. So he can go from the jail cell, he can throw something from there, all the way up to here or from here all the way down there but you can't throw it into the middle um so yeah he has to uh, so yeah, that's gonna make that very interesting but yeah the fact he's also one of the biggest monsters I means he can throw anybody else other than 
the few other ones that are his size. Uh, so let's look at his actual deck. We have two copies of him sweeping, so he can summon or he can draw a card. We have five copies of move and attack. And then we have three copies of attack or double activate. He's <laughs> throwing some sheep and some slime. We don't have any sheep yet in the game. Maybe that'll be like the next expansion. A uh, hint, hint or uh, thing for the next expansion. Alright, so that was deck A. Alright, so deck B is going to give us the bats. Again, since these aren't in direct order, uh, I gotta look for this one really quick. So the bats are gonna summon two to the hat area. They have three total. So here's their little miniatures. And we've seen these guys before because they are gang. They act as the bosses in the game. Um, and then he has one health and he has a special ability called echolocation. Uh, so bats say activate move a bat through passages all the way to the closest enemy in the dungeon, hero or boss. If you decide there are more than one valid targets, when moving, use this ability. Um, you decide if there are more than one target. When moving this ability, you can't carry anything with you. Pro tip, defeating rookies on trading spots. Um, you know, when you have the little bright arrows, you can trade for your items or your beast or your potions. Uh, to get resources and acquire loot. Because you can defeat them, then the rookie drops a resource and you can pick which one. So you drop them in the library. Oh, boom. Also, now you have a book there. Now you can just trade right away. Um, yes, this is a pretty interesting little ability for them. So it says, here we go. Uh, example, the batch players using their echolocation move all the way to the rookie's room as they're the closest enemy to select that movie using only passageways. Uh, they can't carry resources on their way to the portals or use portals for the special ability. So, he can't use a passage or uh, use a portal to go up through here. Uh, so, he has to go all the way around because he's going to go to this rookie there. Um, my guess is there is... I don't know why he can't go that way. Um... But yeah, because so always it'd be one, two, three, four, four rooms there. But if you went this way, it'd be one, two, three, four, five. So you can't go that way. My guess is there's actually not a walkway in there. Um, I think that's a wall. So there's the thing. So you can't use the portal to teleport. So you can go all the way around. But let's you get across. You can do some extra damage. Take out heroes a little bit quicker with these guys. So they're great to just send around to help take out um, all the different guys. And if they get taken out in the process... You know, you got three of them. Uh, two, three, four, five. So they have five cards. We're showing some attacking a rookie there with activate, then attack. Um, yeah, so activate, move all the way to there, and then you can immediately attack that guy. So it's a very good combination there. We have two copies of attack and move, where he's a big, big blob one. He's bouncing around. And then we have three copies of summon him to the hack area and if he defends he gets to move so this again can keep them alive for maybe ranged attacks um showing the arrows there they can get around if they can avoid an attack or if they get attacked they can dodge out of the different room and then maybe they can play their other card to move back into them pretty cool there all right for c we have a witch now you might be, hey, didn't we already have witches? We sure did. This is specifically High Witch Cynthia. So we had the two witches from the base game. Uh, it was Cynthia and... I don't remember her name. I want to say Olga. If I remember right. I don't have that book next to me. Um, I think her name is Olga. It was the other witch. So this witch actually just plays Cynthia by herself. Um... This is just kind of fun because she has summons to the hat room. She has one. She has two health like the other witches. She has five meeples. Now, you don't have any extra meeples in this set. Um, but that's, again, because they're not brand new. They've already existed before. You just use the witch from the base game. Now, you can either use the witches themselves as a dual pair or you can use Cynthia but not both because, again, you only have two meeples. 
Um, or you'll have so many meeples. Uh, but then here she also gets uh, two extra scroll cards to make up for her deck. Because she doesn't have a full ten cards in her deck. She only gets five. So it's a little bit neat. Uh, her special ability has uh, discard the books to mind control a hero boss in the dungeon. To either move or attack them. So the Cthulhu little mini expansion also had this mind control. So it's neat that they brought it back for another character. Um, yeah, so it's got you taking exhausted, or takes a hero or um, a boss, you can move them around and attack. So you get them out of the way, so you can do stuff, or you can use them to attack other people. So it's a quarter card to let you place more books, so you can make better use of your um, book and special abil activate abilities. Then open portals in the library to move there and place more books. Um, Cynthia can only use one Witch Meeple. It starts with her five tactic cards plus two random scrolls. Gather all the scrolls from the loot deck, shuffle them, and give her two scroll cards. This is also a neat thing. That means the more uh, different expansions or things that come out, you're going to get more and more different scrolls for her. Makes her a little bit more unique every time. Um... Since as an example, by discarding a book, Cynthia mind controls the mage to attack another hero. So yeah, right there. So she can spend a book in there. She can take one of the heroes to attack the other one to get rid of one. Just helps out a little bit. Pretty nice to be able to do. Uh, then for her cards, she has three copies of this one, which lets her move and then activate or... Uh, create a book resource and draw a card. And then she has two copies of this one, which is kind of a scroll. Let's her create a portal, summon her, or activate. So her big thing is going to be her scrolls are going to give her differences. Which also makes her very unique because that means she can have a lot more variety deck. To an extent, because scrolls only do certain types of things. But she could potentially have a... Um, more variety deck than a lot of the other monsters because, again, as you buy more and more different expansions or sets come out, uh, she will have more of an option of getting these different scrolls. Uh, Alright, then we have... Next pack, we have pack D. We're going to look at... Now, this one is not a monster. This is another scenario card. So, flip it over, we'll see that. We have four copies of the, I believe this is the traitor. Uh, yep, the traitor card. Uh, so, this is used for scenario number 24. Um, yes, yeah, so these add some null cards in there. Um, she says, place all seven null meeples in the vault and trigger the null stampede and the werewolf returns. Uh, yeah, so you get a bunch of gnolls in here that act as these. Um, pop in and do some bad stuff. They're trying to kidnap some babies. So they have attack. If you do attack, you get a surge to swarm. Move all towards the event. Yeah, so just extra different scenarios that get added to this big old giant scenario. So that's kind of cool. I do wish there were more things like this in here because most of these ex most of these unlocked packs are just the up upgraded monsters. I wish there was more where they added more scenario cards that could pop in that you could add into their sets um, to switch up what each different scenario might be. Like, oh, okay, I have my regular scenario pack. And then if I dig this thing, I unlock a new bunch of cards. But we only do a couple of those. Um, Alright, so we have Pack E, which is going to get us our Shroom Troops. Now, these guys have some very special abilities. We get eight Shrooms. Um, and they have a couple of unique abilities with them. So they have... Oop, I dropped him. They just summon three to the hat. They have eight meeples, one health, ten cards. Um, so they have up on their top there, they can activate. They can discard a frog to acquire a special ability from a monster that is not currently in play. You may acquire this ability as if it were yours. Note, the only other monster's... Ability can be attached. To, only one other monster ability can be attached at a given time. If you activate your ability again, you have to replace the current special card. 
Uh, pro tip is you can easily adapt by changing your special ability, acquire cards with activations, and go for what your team uh, mate monsters are lacking. Yes, this is a very unique ability. So we have, uh, in this example, Shroom Trooper uses your special ability to spend a frog in the shroom in a room of a shroom troop maple to attach the ink special ability to their card. Um, so there you can see their card, and now they're getting the imps. So now they can activate to move one of their shroom troops to the dungeon. Keep in mind that doesn't fill any requirements for the ability. For instance, Cthulhu's mind control only will escape, so without the nap card, shroom troop can't use this ability. Um, yeah, so you can use the activate. There's actually a big section in the beginning of the book that explains this a little bit more that we did skip over while we were going through the rules. Um, so we're going to look at that right now, now that we're talking about these guys. So, the Shroom Troops. Uh, grants access to special abilities. Not all abilities will be as useful. For example, the Dragon's healing is useful as your meeples only have 1 HP. So he heals back up, so it doesn't help you. Like Cthulhu can only be used with sleeping, so without nap cards, can't use his ability. King Slime, you can only place slimes if you are alive after receiving damage. The Shroom Trooper is removed from the dungeon with one hit, therefore would not be able to place slimes. And the Vampire will have the ability to search for cards and command bats to be amazing. Without cards to summon the bats, you can't use them. Um, so yeah, so some of the guys won't be useful because they don't have ways to produce or replicate their abilities. Uh, and then some other ones that are really great are Imps or Poltergeist. Moving faster allows you to acquire more loot. Um, skeletons, use them early in the game to acquire beasts. Wizard folks, if you need to defeat many heroes and spread multiple rooms, dealing range damage is the way to go. The Werewolf, while it requires some setup to get the bones first, can help you defeating bosses. And Slimes, dry more cards late game can be amazing. Um, also says, while using the throw, you need to take into account the Shroom Troop size. It allows you to only throw monsters that are smaller than you are at, that are smaller than you or traps and reaches. So a stone troll able to throw medium or small monsters, as they are huge, the Shroom Troop special ability only allows you to throw traps or resources. Finally, when playing Shroom Troop, you can keep in mind your starting cards may give you ways to summon monsters, but few actions. Your strength allows you to be able to adapt your group and scenarios and needs. To be ever changing, trying to acquire loot cards, and some to use sometimes using destroy to call cards help too. So yeah, they have a really neat way as they can kind of become anybody else and use some of their other abilities, um, which is a really neat little mechanic. Uh, so you could use like discard a book to mind control someone, uh, just by looking at some of the ones we've already seen. You could use the back to echolocation to like zoom around the map, it's not carrying stuff. Or like we said, you could use the troll's throw, just becomes a little bit limited. But still, maybe having, there might be time to be able to throw that might be helpful. Now, I think the note that they don't really tell you in here is that you can only use ones, or they might not like highlight too much, is you can only use ones for characters not currently in the dungeon. So if somebody else is playing the stone troll, you can't also copy the stone troll. Um, Alright, what are the cards do we have? We have three copies of the cop. <laughs> the the mushroom and the uh the cauldron here so you just summon him or activate um again since you have eight guys out if you can get a lot of them out doing a lot have a lot of these different actions or use swarm actions that could be pretty cool too uh three copies of uh, i'm playing a harmonica so he summons to the crossbones or he gets to move and then he gets to move and then we have four copies of Summon to the magic eye or use a ranged attack. So their whole thing is they have a lot of stuff to summon. A little bit of move, one activation, and one attack. Um, but what they're going to really do is that's why I said you might want to burn some of these. So after you start getting some of your guys out, maybe it might make more sense to uh, get rid of some of the attack cards after you've drawn some equipment. They'll maybe let you attack. Or you could get rid of the move card if you've drawn scrolls that let you move quicker. Um, so you have some options there, so you don't need to summon constantly, where then you could be drawing more things that let you do damage, or maybe do activations. So very, very cool. Alright, drop all these guys off the board, and then we will look at our next unlock. We have unlock, oh, I almost said number, letter F. 
which ends up being our fairies. So there's one of our fairies. And we get four of them. Uh, you summon uh, one health. They have a special ability that says they do not take ranged damage. Yeah, because they're so tiny. Um, I gotta find out exactly where their rules are. I think that's all they have for rules. Uh, yeah, good, they're good in your size. They're immune to range. Destroy cards. Cautiously, yes. You risk eliminating yourself to destroy all cards as you summon more fairies into the dungeon. So that is because they have special cards in here. You need to summon three at a time. So they got three copies of them kind of dancing around. Uh, maybe summoning a spell. So they get a move and do a range attack. Or they can use this new burn mechanic to draw a scroll. So the burn mechanic says... Um... Let's you, when you play a card with Burnout, you destroy it. You remove it from the game. Um, which, like, great way to get a card really cheaper. They can just create a scroll with all of them to go, go collect a resource and move it. Uh, but then they no longer have access to this card. Things out your deck, which can be nice and helpful, too. Because we just kind of set up the mushrooms. Um, getting rid of some of those cards will be help you draw better cards. So as you pick up maybe some more items or scrolls or equipment or whatever... Potions, uh, various loot cards, you can then start destroying some of your other cards. You don't want to destroy too many of your summon cards, otherwise you're not going to be able to play them as they get defeated. Um, so then we have one, two, three, four copies of a movement card. <laughs> Carrying around a code, so move and activate. And then we have three copies of summon and move. Um... Yeah, so they can be very powerful. So it says, for this example, the fairy player was ranged, ranged attacked by two archers defending the shroom troops without taking any damage. Uh, so basically, they can take the damage for the other guy because they can take both hits. They just don't they need to get hit by it. Um, later, the fairy decides to strike a card from their discard pile back to the box to acquire a scroll. Um, and it gets added. So they get rid of one card and they exchange it right away. So they don't have to then do all the extra research. So yeah, getting rid of a summoning a move might be worth having three extra range. But if you get rid of too many of them summon cards, then you can't come back. Although, yes, you're immune to range damage. So that will definitely help keep you alive a little bit longer. It also means that, you know, once you get melee attacked, you could get kicked out of the game very fast. Cool. All right. Then we have F. F is like one of the first ones mentioned to be unlocked. Um, you just have to beat Chapter 1. It's going to get you some more gadget cards. Gadget are a new type of, kind of like loot card. Uh, you have to have either the Guardian tokens, the Junk Bot tokens, or the Guardian Room. So you know, these little guys, you can produce one by getting a trap or go to the actual tile. Um, the Guardian tile, which has the same symbols on it. Uh, so, depending on which one's available. So, here we're going to get a rocket. It has a new search icon. So, if you search for any card in your tactics deck that has the draw a card symbol, then you can also burn this card um, to draw a new card. So, you just sacrifice it right away. Hey, I found one. You can get rid of it back out of your deck. We have some wind up roller skates. So, let's look for a movement card. You can move, and then you may move a gang. And then the third one we get is search for a magic portal card, which lets you or do a magic portal and then move. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Then you can like place one. It's a, it's a portal blunderbuss card. Um, yeah, you can make a portal and then you can find one. Or if you don't have a portal, you can go look for one. Uh, so it helps you create portals. So that's neat. There's three extra loot cards that get added. This is the other thing I did wish the. Um, unlock cards have more. We only have three of these loot cards. I wish there was another pack somewhere else after beating part of it. You unlock a couple more. Or or the fact this doesn't have any other regular loot cards. The beast, scrolls, potions, equipment. It would have been neat if they would have had like, them spread over like another four scenarios. Um, or that like it would have been neat if it's like, hey, if you beat this scenario, you unlock... A, you unlock this monster if you if you beat the monster like and then maybe if you survive it or 
Maybe if they had like a, a secondary adjacent set of like, hey, if you beat these a second time, here's some extra loot cards, right? Would have been kind of neat to just have a way to unlock more loot uh, than just monsters. All right, then we have H, which H is going to give us our King Slime. Who is now? This is neat because now we have a regular slime and a king slime. Um, so the king slime has summoning him to a crossbone or summoning a regular slime. Uh, so he does get that ability as well. He can summon slimes. He has one meeple for him, which is this big giant one, which I like. He's a king because he has a king inside of him. That's his whole thing. Uh, three health. But he has a special ability that says, uh, anytime you take damage, you can play a slime. Um, and you can have up to eight of them uh, with one hit point each. So it says, every time a slime can receive one damage from a melee attack, it has to be a melee attack, so you saw the, sh the sword on there. If they're still alive, they summon one slime in the room. Slimes have one HP and can only be commanded by the slime king when they're in the same room. It can also be using his swarm actions. Uh, pro tip, acquire potion to help you draw more cards, uh, more movement and or alternate activation cards. You have different options to do stuff. Um, and then he says, it says, in this example, Slime King was attacked by a melee by the mage who loses one health. And then making their passively trigger, summons a slime into their room. Uh, so he went from three health down to two health, but now he gets an additional slime. And you find ways to heal yourself. That's always good as well. Um, so, of course, the question is going to be, is can you play with the Slime and the Slime King at the same time? You probably can. I just, you just have to watch having enough Meeples to be able to use it. He only has three health. So, um, at, at most, he's going to be able to summon two at a time until he's down to one health and he can't survive anymore unless you keep healing him. Um, and as long as you're not playing all your slimes. At some point, if you run out of one or the other, you won't be able to use all of them. Uh, what are his abilities? So he has two copies of this one right here where he's get rid of a slime to heal that many hit points or summon one. So you can either bring guys into him or shove them back out. So there's a way he can kind of keep playing around. The slime has some abilities like that as well. He has five copies of this one here. Where he does double attack or he gets to move. He's just hitting all the sword in his back. And then we have three copies of move and activate. So there is a tangle on his head. He's got that. So it is interesting now is we've had pink slimes. which are the little baby slimes. We've had... Um, the yellow slime, which is a king slime, but we've also seen uh, blue slimes and green slimes. And green ones seem to be more like the acidic, gelatinous cube type slimes. Um, and I'm not really sure what the blue ones are. So it'd be cool if, like, in the future we get another set of slimes where you eventually have a team of just various slimes throughout the game uh, doing different stuff. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, that's our slime king. Uh, right, what is up next? We have Pack I, which is going to be our puppies. Two little werewolf pups. Um, I find their page again. Sorry, an odd spot. All right, so the puppies there, we have uh, six of those. Uh, and they're the same color as the werewolf, same way the vampires, the same as the bats. It's kind of neat, so that they kind of work together. Uh, so they have uh, one health each. They can summon two to the swords. They have a special ability called, I think it's Bark it was the name of it. Yeah, Bark. Um, says, uh, activate, move an exhausted hero, boss, or monster belonging to another player from any room where you have a puppy melee to an adjacent room. Uh, enemies or allies move this way, do not inspire, and will fall on traps. So this is a neat way for instead of you moving all your guys around, you can shuffle other characters around, and you can move 
um, enemies into um, move them onto traps and they take damage and they immediately die. But you also have to watch because if you move one of your your other allies, um, mini meeples into monsters into a room with a trap, they will also take damage and probably die because most of them only have one hit point. But there's a way you can also get them to hey move an extra space into a different room. Uh, quarter loot gives you ambush action so you can summon more puppies to the dungeon while carefully barking at allies. The idea is have these guys spread around and then you can bark wherever and help your allies move one space quicker somewhere else. If you have multiple, you can, might even be able to chain that together. Um, you want to move, move a guy like from one room and then activate and move him to a different room. Um, oops, we knocked everything down. I'm going to take a look at how that ability here. So it says... In this example, Puppy Player acted the special ability to bark at both the mage and the slime, moving them into the workshop. Uh, both the mage and slime will fall into traps here. Thankfully, the slime player had a card to defend themselves while splitting themselves into two slimes. So you can do something like that as well. Defend themselves from damage and they do a summon. So it's a great way to like, hey, now we got rid of the mage and we got an extra meeple out. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um... But I think it only, yeah, it says once. So I'm assuming you have to bark for every single guy in each individual room. Um, let's see what his cards do, the puppies. We have one, two, three copies of this one. Uh, we're getting hugged by the archer. Um, draw a card and defend or summon one to the sword room. Four copies of him. Chasing down the mage, barking him. So move, and if you move, you can activate. So then you can move somewhere, and then barking down. So you're kind of chasing him down. And then we have three copies of the puppy with a spoon. Uh, it's moving, attack, or activate. Uh, which is really cool. Now, I think in the first campaign, there is a dragon um, that lets you do stuff. Uh, you're trying to protect it. And you're supposed to use a talk to any card by using puppies, and you use gnolls. Because that's what was available. I wonder if you could swap over to these guys for that scenario. Just as the meeples. Um, just because that way it, they look like the wolves that are on the cards. Uh, that's just a thought though. They don't mention it in the book at all. Alright. So then along with our puppies. We're going to look at our next card. We have L. Which is the werewolf. So the werewolf, we get one big meeple, and there he is. Just want to show him off next to the little puppy. Same color, kind of just the same feel. Um, they get to summon. They have one, and they get to summon one. And they have two health. They have two different special things in here. First of all, they have their activated ability. Uh, it says, discard a bone from your room if you do perform a swarm melee attack. So this is interesting. He's by himself. There's only one of them. He can't really swarm and do stuff. But he has a minion with the puppies. So if you summon all the extra puppies out, uh, he can do some damage. Now there's six puppies again, which is what we got from the puppies, right? We had six of them. So uh, again, kind of like the slimes is we have, uh, can you play both at the same time? Technically you could and have one person controlling puppies, one controlling him. But then what's going to end up happening is you're just going to end up fighting over the number of meeples. So that's the only thing that might happen in that case. Um, but yeah, he can also control them as well. I think generally they're going to recommend not playing ones that have minions or use the same aspect. Uh, but yeah, so you can spend bones to go ahead and summon and do uh, extra swarm attacks, which is really cool. And that's what they're mentioning with the... Uh, shroom troopers, what they could do is if you place bones down and you get 10 shroom troopers out, you could definitely swarm and have as many as you could have out and they could swarm attack. They can't use the puppies unless they have a way to summon puppies, but they'd be able to use that activating effect. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, it says puppies have only one HP and can only be commanded by the werewolf when they're in the same room. They can also be using his swarm action. Acquire movement, equipment, and the shovel for maximum damage. So he's got three copies of Howl here. So he's howling. This is summon himself or summon two extra puppies. He's got five copies of him with a scimitar there. Um, moving attack or activate. 
And he's got two copies of him with some werewolves, or some little wolves, so he can to pups. So he can activate twice, so he can keep doing that extra swarm attack. So that's what he wants to do, is, is gather all his um, puppies with him, and then they want to just mass attack groups of enemies at the same time. Uh, but then he can also send them into the other rooms, and they can do stuff. Now again, if you were for some reason playing with both of them, he could help summon more and then the Wolves College use the echolocation, or not, they can use their bark ability to send enemies back in to the room where the werewolf was. Um, so that could also be a tricky thing to do there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Alright, we only got four more to go. So we have... So that was uh, L. So the only one we skipped so far is we skipped K because we showed that in the other video. Uh, we have L here. So that was J. So the next one would have been K. No, I, I said that last one was L, but it's a J. I'm sorry. I thought it was a backwards L for some dumb reason. Uh, J, K, we missed. We jumped to L. We have our vampire. Uh, so the vampire here, just to summon one, he has one meeple. Uh, so just to jump in and do his thing. Where was the vampire in the book? Those are bats. There he is. Um, Alright, so he has a couple of, you know, if we grab a little bat to stick next to him to show his bat summons look like. So you have another character that does summonings or has minions. We'll drop that down. His special ability is to discard a book to search. So discard a book to search a character card for one card of your choice. Not bad at all. Get exactly what you need. Um, this again, Shroom Trooper could really make good use of this. He has bats where he can summon up to three of them um, as minions, and they have one health each. Uh, same thing, they can be used for swarm actions, stuff like that. Pro tip, acquire attack cards, and then defend the Vulk in the second wave. So the idea is just have him boost up and then kind of just sit back and help protect. He has three copies of him seducing the rogue. Uh, so he does damage, he gets to heal, and then he gets, or he gets to move. And this can again be a thing, is you can sit back, and as guys are coming towards you, you can take them out, he can heal back up, so if like two or three get in there, he can take damage. But then he can also go some attacks and get some of his health back. He's got four copies of him summoning, so he's summoning a bat. Or he can swarm and move everybody, so he can just drop bats wherever he needs to, and then you can bring them all with him. And then he has three copies of summon himself or place a book and then activate, which then immediately lets him use his, if he plays another activate, he can then discard that book to search for another card. So basically he can funnel himself to get what he needs. Very, very cool. So if we look at his, um, just a little tips here, it says, in this example, the vampire player, Activate and discard your book to use your special ability. So I was going to look at all the cards in their tactic decks and pick a card of their choice. So they had uh, his summoning one. He had a, a beast. He had a equipment. And he had a gadget. Uh, so then the vampire uses this card to swarm move along with the bats to the library. So he's going to all move over there. Bring all three of them with them. Then you can start trying to acquire some more books. Um, and this is awesome, awesome where the cooperative works in here very well, right? Because um, now if you have uh, someone else creating portals, the witches or whoever, um, now he can sit there and go from the library and move around. Or if you have the troll, he can throw stuff. So you can get some really cool combo effects just depending on which guys you do and work together. All right, we have M. M is going to get us our Gorgon, which is like the second character unlocked. So there's the Gorgon. A little brown little snake in her hair. Um, I'm glad they didn't draw all the snakes. Just one's enough to show you what it is. Um, so she gets to summon one to the vault. Like most big monsters, they just summon right to the vault. Uh, has three health, and he has a special ability. It says, look at the top card of the guild deck, then decide whether this goes back on the top or the bottom of the deck. Use your special ability often, make sure to send mages to the bottom of the deck before throwing heroes to the cell. Use the extra actions to craft potions that will help you draw defense, movement, and 
alt cards. So it's kind of neat. You look at it and you'll be like, hey, I'm going to do this. Oh, there's no mage on the top of the deck. All right, we're going to discard a hero to the cell. Now I get to draw three extra cards used for the turn. Um, yeah, so it says, use the player to the top card, place it in the bottom, mage in the bottom of the pile, then throw the heroes to the cell to draw another card. Another effective use of the ability would be placing the hero back on the top, not to use the cells, then position yourself in the dungeon with the information to defend those treasures. So it's like, okay, if you know the um, mage is going to be next, what you could do is you know he's going to come into one of the two hat rooms. So you could position her to be in one of the hat rooms, so that way she could defeat him next turn, or you could drop some traps in them them rooms. So you could kind of plan, like, or, or I know the... Uh, you know, I know the warrior's going to be next, and we have a trap in that room. Great. Let him, let him go to that room. He can go ahead and land in that room. He's going to hit a trap, and he'll be defeated. Um, or if you see a scenario card, and it's going to be like, the scenario card says, do this or discard tactics cards. Oh, I don't can't afford to discard a tactics, and we don't have a point to play that. You can get rid of it. So this could be a very useful card. Um, you know... Oh, sorry. Oh, we have three copies of her kind of just hanging out. Here are some weapons. Uh, it says, summon her to the vault or move and activate. We have four copies of her turning a, a warrior to stone. Uh, defend. If you do defend, you get to do an attack or she can do a ranged attack. Uh, oh, and then the card is going to come right before it. It's just kind of funny. We have three copies of the warrior attacking him, or attacking her, getting turned to stone. She's defend, she just to draw a tactics card. Um, and then, or she can move around. Yeah, so her whole thing is kind of like that. She's defending and moving. So then, again, you have these defend cards. You can then see what's coming. Hey, I know where a hero is going to be. Move her to that area and then have her play a defense card, right? And hey, look, she draws her tactics back. Or she gets to do damage right away to them. She's going to plan on sabotaging the heroes as they come into the dungeon. Alright, our next one we have Pack N, which is going to be our Grim Reaper. We have more Skellymen. It's always fun to have. I do like these, like, the, the whole um, mechanic of having minions so that way not only do you get to use these guys you get to use some of the other characters as well so it's kind of like we had the fairies i wonder if maybe at one point maybe in the future they might add the tree ink because that was part of the scenario um all right so the reaper here who gets a big giant mini it's a big old scythe i i love the uh scythe going over but then he has his hair in there as well or his like hood so it's really like a neat little uh Way to do that. So he gets to summon to the eye room and then summon a skull. He has two hit points. His special ability says discard a bone to summon a skeleton in the same room as a reaper. Skeletons have one HP and can only be commanded by the reaper. When he's in the same location, can also be used to swarm. So the only reason this is all together versus the puppies or um, the other ones is because... Some of the other ones is because it's it's all one ability. The other ones had them separate just because they were a separate ability on their card. Same thing with the slimes are like that too. They all just show up on the same one because it's all one ability. Uh, yeah, so again, you have player on summoning skeletons. So says, use the graveyard often to boost your skeleton's numbers, acquiring offensive equipment for maximum damage. So he's just going to summon death. Uh, and then we have, in this example, the Reaper player needs a swarm action to get four activations. Uh, with the first two, they place the bones in the graveyard using the room action. Then using the other two activations, there's a special ability discarding the two bones to summon two skeletons at the graveyard. Because uh, they already had four guys in there. So right, he's using swarm activate. Activates First to summon two bones, and then uses his special ability to summon two more skeletons. Now he has uh, five skeletons out and himself. So he's a little massive army by himself right there. 
Uh, then if you can get some item cards that have, or loot cards that have swarm attack, that could be very cool. Three, four of him looking very grim with his little bird friend. He moves twice or attacks. Three copies of him playing in the graveyard. Uh, just to summon himself or mass act, swarm activate. And then he has three copies of deal damage to someone. And if you do, place a bonus. This would be very helpful again. You get him around and he takes out a hero. Then now he can turn around and summon another skeleton. Which then his skeletons can use to protect him as well. Very fun. Alright, our last, our last secret deck and our last set of cards for this is pack O. Which are our special spiders so there's a little spider um i gotta find where the spiders are in the book so the spiders have um they get summoned three of them get summoned to the swords room they have one hp each they have five meeples uh, but they have a special ability, which is a spider web. It says, activate. Lay down one of your spiders on the board. If a hero or boss is summoned or moves into the room with a lied down spider, exhaust it before it's inspiring or attacking. Then stand up all spiders in the room. If you move, in, if you move a spider that was lying down, it stands up. Uh, pro tip, lying down spiders far from each other. Acquire movement beasts if able. So these guys are basically their own little traps. Um, it doesn't defeat the heroes outright, but it stops them from inspiring. It stops them from attacking. It does not stop them from using their summoned abilities. So if, like, you have them in the cage, it won't prevent uh, the mage from reactivating everybody. But it will stop them. Uh, or if they reactivate in a room, it won't stop them at all. It only stops them when they move into the room. Um, or they're summoned. Uh, so yeah, here we have examples. In this example, the spider player used a special ability to lie down two of its spiders in the same room, which is not the best strategy. Um, yes, yeah, so interesting that we say something like that. So when a hero enters a room, the spider will exhaust, but he will also stand up um, the two spiders. Meanwhile, the other spider in the match room will be defeated by the other hero. So it would have made more sense for the bang. What they're saying is what made more sense would, would have been just lay down one of these and lay down him. Then when they got summoned into both rooms, you would cancel both of their effects. Um, but yeah, still very interesting ability. Um, I like the back of their spider card. So like, so he has a kind of like a skull on the back. Is his design. But then we have one, two, three, four copies of this one where he gets a question mark. And he's playing some cards. Uh, so attack, place a coin, or move. I just, you got a lot of monsters in a suck to place resources, so it's kind of cool. We have three copies of this one, who has an umbrella. Um, little guy trapped up in his ball up there, so he gets to move and activate. And then we have three copies of him with some baby spiders and some exclamation points. So he gets to summon two or activate. Uh, so very cool. That was our spiders so that is all of our different monsters for the set i'm just gonna bring all of them out we're gonna take a look at all of them i don't know if i'll get them all to stand some of the big guys don't want to stand as well if i flip this so it's flat and we can stand them all up there's our rookie there's our slime we have our troll we have our vampire in the back we have our werewolf have some mushrooms, kind of see some of the different height differences. Little baby puppies. The bats. And drop the fairy back there. Our reaper. And our gorgon. So there are brand new monsters for the game. Uh, so yeah, what? Are, so this is boss battles. So um, why would you want to pick this game up? If you want more scenarios, it's definitely going to give you more. It gives you another, um, I think, like, 10 scenarios or whatever. Uh, plus, we have some extra ones that don't have more cards to unlock. So, even if you don't care about the whole unlocking mechanic, you want to get the game, open it up, crack open all of them, be able to play as these guys when you have them. Um, you might just want to keep in, you might just have to hunt 
um, it's fine. You can go go ahead and mix all the cards, your hero cards or monster cards, put them all aside. There's only a few packs that are really separate that you need to keep out, and it's like one or two that have the letters on them. So you can usually just find them along with the other scenario cards. Um, but yeah, add some gadgets in there. So you get a handful of gadgets you can add into any game. If you want to add the bots in there. We have all the new monsters in here. We have what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 new monsters you can play as. Plus, we have the rookies you can add. So, yeah, even if you don't care for the boss version of the game, you can definitely add your rookies into your game. Add the gadgets into your game. Add new monsters into the game. Just to make some other different stuff as well. All right, so that's what we have for this set. Uh, hope to see you guys later. Check out the other videos if you haven't. You haven't checked out the base game for some reason. Go back check that out. There's also a video of some of the minor expansions. Um, and then as they release more content or pick up more stuff, I'll definitely do some more videos. See you guys later. Bye.